G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to feature this particular piece from Waldorf Watches and uh, uh, the unboxing initially I have done on uh, my Facebook channel. I did a video there so head on over and check it out if you want to see the initial unboxing but you know again just a cardboard box uh, which I think is just a influencer packaging here so there's a warranty card that comes with it. The, the normal box I believe is either wooden or at least a four faux wooden box that you might get if you purchase this directly from the company uh, for the purchase price and then you know just have a look at that there's a nice little piece actually this is the tag that comes with the watch it's got a bit of a, a relief on it so there we have uh, that and just get the packaging out of the way and show you the watch so guys what we have here is the manufacturer Waltoff or in uh, English it would be manufactory Waldorf uh, I, I I've pr attempted to pronounce that in German, but I I'm not a German speaker, so let me know uh, how you might actually say, you know, I probably butchered it to some extent. Uh, so this model is the Multimatic Diamond Silver. This uh, watch uh, is their flagship model. It's the most complicated uh, movement that they produce. They do have a few other uh, models, but this one is by far and away the most complex uh, with the most complications and features. It does come in a number of other uh, iterations in terms of color, uh, rose gold, yellow gold, as well as black and blue dials. So head on over to check it out if you wish uh, to look at what other models uh, they do produce. So uh, this company, Manufactory Waldorf, uh, was a Kickstarter actually, in 2015 I believe, uh, and uh, they, they did that campaign. It is a Fortsheim uh, based company. Uh, and it does score a uh, made in Germany down the bottom there, but this is a Miota movement. So, you know, I, as I understand it, made in Germany doesn't have a great deal of control, you know, that, that term. Uh, and in fact, of course, that movement is Japanese. So let me know uh, if you have knowledge about what made in Germany specifically means, because as I have read, it certainly doesn't mean as much as made in Switzerland, for example. So this watch, um, initial uh, Kickstarter price was uh, $399 Swiss francs or uh, in USD, it was $450 USD that I saw in Indiegogo site uh, list that. The current list price is actually $675 uh, USD. So, you know, um, there's a bit of a difference there. We'll talk about the value proposition as we go into it. The movement in this case is the Citizen Miota 9100. And this is the first time I featured this particular movement on the channel, the multi-complicated movement here. And pleasingly, this movement actually uh, beats at a higher rate of 28,800 beats per hour, you know, uh, above the typical Japanese uh, movement of 21,600. So this is more towards the typical Swiss uh, speed. 42 hour is the rated power reserve. It does have a quick set day and date. So day in the nine o'clock market there, a uh, sub dial, and uh, the date in that 430 window, in this case, black writing on a white uh, disc. Uh, it does hack and it does have manual wind and it manual winds in the zero position here. Uh, now there is a power reserve complication at the 12 o'clock. Okay, so that's a power reserve arc there you can see. Uh, it does also have a quick set uh, month, right, in that uh, three o'clock subdial, and it's actually set by this button, right? But pleasingly, this month actually will click over when you go from 31st to 1st, unlike many of the seagull equivalent movements where you actually have to manually set the month every time. Uh, this one actually clicks over with the 31st to the 1st date change. Uh, and then lastly, it's also got a 24 hour subdial at that six o'clock uh, position there, you can see. So really, you know, multi complications, right? You've got day, date, right, month, power reserve and 24 hour subdial for a total of five uh, different complications on this watch, which is really quite pleasing uh, with, with this movement. And uh, now this one is rated at minus 10 to plus 40 seconds per day. In use, this has actually given me about plus six seconds per day. So it is actually a pretty well regulated movement. The case here is 43 millimeters in diameter. All right, it is 14 millimeters in thickness, uh, 22 millimeter lugs and it does appear to have a screw on the side here but that's actually just a faux screw right uh, it does have a quick release 
uh, on the strap here so it just has the standard spring bar holes inside so this screw is actually not directly functional for removing uh, these particular straps overall the lug to lug uh, is 50 millimeters so you know a pretty fair size for 43 millimeter watch it's pretty modest actually so the lugs don't actually extend beyond too far uh, overall weight comes in at a very round 100 grams so you know pleasingly light because it is a leather strap watch of course the case as i pan it around that you can see is fully polished okay let's have a look it, it's fully polished case it does have this vertical uh, ridge patterns on the side here okay vertical ridge patterns on the side and it's got a screw in display back here with the the crown that is not screwing right the crown is just a push in it does have a sign there it means that it is just a 50 meter water rated watch which is of course a pretty decent uh, rating for a watch uh, of this uh, type of function now the dial i think is where uh, most of the action and detail is here so it is really a very multi-layered dial with radial patterns on all the sub dials let's see if i can get it to show you here now if you look at the the sub dials they all have a radial uh, pattern coming out from where the hands are right there is a larger area around the six o'clock 24 hour sub dial right this this larger area with the radial uh, pattern there okay so that, that's pretty pleasing um, and it's got an applied power reserve arch for the power reserve indicator at the 12 o'clock right so you can see that metal applied uh, arch there the second layer above uh, the bottom layer is a vertical brush pattern so I'm not sure that's going to come through but there's a vertical uh, brush metal pattern there and then the third layer which is the outer layer where the numerals are you know the chapter ring uh, that's actually a circular brush pattern and then this four screws on the on the dial there and then just inside the roman numerals you have the i guess what you might call the minute or second markings you know zero five all the way up to 55 there and i'm not sure whether you really need that but they've included those numberings there okay so that that's the really the details on the dial there the loom here uh, is really just on the main hands as well as the day and the month hands there is no loom elsewhere on the watch and i think that's not uh, unreasonable actually in fact I, I wouldn't be too displeased in fact if it didn't have any loom at all they call that tritech swiss loom i don't know much about that uh, i don't think it functions as well as super luminova by any means in my experience of using this overnight uh, so let me know if you know anything more about tritech swiss as a loom source okay so that's really uh most of the the details on the dial there that i've described right manufacturer waldorf at the top there and then uh, the the bezel is of course a fixed bezel right fixed polished bezel you're not going to have a rotating bezel in a watch that looks like this and then on top that is a flat sapphire crystal right that's that's not going to be anything more than you would be expecting uh in a in a watch of this price and pleasingly they have done a sapphire crystal with anti-reflective coating uh the band is black leather okay uh, genuine leather of course it's got the company name there right uh, I guess that might say genuine leather I don't know what that actually means but uh, pre presumably it's this leather of some form right stitched and uh, you know quality wise no complaints I think this is pretty good actually certainly far above a lot of the Chinese mushroom brand uh, leather that I have featured on the channel and then it's got a steel buckle with uh, the sign there and then as I've, I've, I've pointed out, this has got a pleasingly, it's got a quick release lever there to, to let you change the straps very easily. Okay, so that's really most of the details of the watch. What have I enjoyed about this? Well, you know, the company brief was to really provide quality watches at affordable price points, you know, really European made or at least European designed. Apparently it's designed by a Swiss in Switzerland and then it's originated by a German and it's uh, based in Germany. Uh, so it has got that European base, but of course they do take uh, Eastern origin parts and definitely it is a Miyota movement here. I think it mostly meets the brief of providing quality and affordability, right? This is pretty good quality in my hands in all my experience. It's been 
very pleasing and I have no complaints at all about uh, the finishing of this watch. The design of course is not to everyone's liking, right? It is pretty busy but that's what you get with this movement which really is really quite a good movement. It's a 28800 multi-complicated Miyota movement, fully functional complications particularly with that month that clicks over. That's been the first I've seen of that uh, compared to the Seagull movements that is definitely a step up and I've been quite happy with that. And the dial, well I, I think there's lots of attention, lots of interesting feature on the dial there. If you don't like busy dials, this isn't, you know, this isn't a watch that you're going to like. But if you do like some attention, some you know, talking points uh, on a dial that has lots of interest, well, you might be, you know, you might be fascinated with this particular piece. Uh, what are the weaknesses? Well, really not many to talk about. You know, I, I really uh, have found it difficult to, to really have much to criticize here. You know, I think it's pretty high riding, right? And that ridge sides might not be to everyone's liking. And I'll just put it on the wrist now to, to show you what I mean. Right, so there it is, right? The Multimatic Diamond Silver 50mm lug to lug, 43mm diameter on my 17 centimeter wrist, right? I, I think it fits well on me, right? It's, it's the borderline 50mm for me, but I think it fits all right. Uh, but if you look at the, the case design, it is slightly high riding, certainly not your typical dress style, right? Usually you won't have a dress watch that is so high riding. Okay, so I think uh, because of the, the thickness and because of the design of the face, it's strictly uh, not going to meet all dress criteria. It is a dress design watch, but you know, it kind of flaunts that a bit in terms of uh, the, the complications and the overall uh, you know, overall design kind of gets it more towards the casual end of the spectrum there. Lastly, I would say the value proposition, well, you know, let me know what you think, right? It does have a lot of features, right? It does have Sapphire, Miyota movement, which is a pretty good one. Uh, but at 675, I think the value proposition probably isn't super compelling. Certainly at the Kickstarter prices that I quoted earlier, it's, I think, a very, very fair proposition but let me know what you think about this particular watch so guys that's the watch you know if you have any experience with this brand uh, i'm interested to hear your thoughts if you have any of their pieces uh, particularly if you have this uh, multi-matic model uh, interested to hear uh, your experiences and how you've enjoyed it uh, guys if you like my videos do consider subscribing i'm putting out new content every week always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology Thank you again for sticking with me and as always, I will catch you next time.